Good evening. Welcome to the 50th New York Film Festival and welcome to the Eleanor Bunin Monroe Film Center. My name is Eugene Hernandez from the Film Society of Lincoln Center and I want to thank you all for being here for this, um, this uh, latest in an ongoing series of free talks that we're doing here at the Film Center. Um, and as you also know or may know, these events are being streamed live around the world actually on YouTube, youtube.com slash filmlink. Uh, so we invite you to tune in, and welcome to everybody who's watching from outside New York uh, on YouTube. Um, join, uh, join us later this week for ongoing events every night here at the Film Festival, and occasional events as well down at the Apple Store in Soho. Um, without further ado, let me bring down, we're thrilled to be working with IndieWire tonight, and let me bring down uh, the moderator of tonight's event from IndieWire, Nigel Smith. Thank you, Eugene, and the Film Society of the Lincoln Center for having us. Um, so as uh, Eugene said, we have Greta Gerwig here, along with her uh, Francis Hawk co-star, Mickey Sumner. So if you could please welcome them down to the stage. So welcome, welcome, ladies. Thank you. Thanks. For the New York premiere of the film, correct? Yes. Yes. So, um, given that the film was recently picked up by IFC, I think, I know you're so far. Should we face each other? Okay. Um, given that the film was recently picked up by IFC Films, obviously trailer hasn't been cut yet for the film to give um, the audience here and those at home, you know, um, an idea of what the film's about. So, since you co-wrote it along with Noah, I was wondering if you could just give a brief synopsis of what uh, Francis Ha's about. Sure. Um, uh, Francis Ha is about, uh, it's, a, it's kind of a love story between this girl Francis and her best friend Sophie. And um, I, I, it's, I'm so, I'm actually, writing something makes you sort of horrible at synopses. Like it makes you worse at it because you, you feel like I can't possibly synopsize this. But um, yeah, it's a love story between them. And um, it's about living in New York and being an artist. And um, she's a dancer. And she's trying to figure out how to make all the parts of her life work um, while she's exiting her youth not very well. I just realized I gave you like a tough question. Yeah, because so Francis Ha is a tough film to, you know, to sum up. Right. It's not your average romantic um, you know, comedy between two characters. Um, so why don't we first talk about the fact that this marks the New York premiere. I mean, it's such a New York-centric film. It was, um, was it written here as well? Uh, well, it was written over uh, a period of time in different places. I, uh, it, it took a w I mean, it started with just trading ideas, and then um, I'd, I'd write some stuff, and Noah would write some stuff, and sometimes we'd be in the same place, and we'd write scenes together. But um, it was uh, very organic, the way that it happened, but it always... I think Noah can probably speak to the, you know, you know, the way the film was photographed, but um, it always felt like a, a very specific New York movie about a very specific time and place and yeah. um, geography of the city. I was talking to Mickey earlier, and she, like, you've been both at the Telluride premiere and at the uh, Toronto premiere, but um, you said that like, you know, yesterday kind of marked a, a special experience. Can you b talk about bringing this film to a New York audience and what it's been like sharing it with, uh, with the Big Apple? Um, I mean, personally, it was, I think last night was a, the highlight of my life. Um, <laughs> It's no understatement. <laughs> being in uh, New York and being in this movie and at Lincoln Center, it's it's huge. Really, I, I <laughs> love, yeah. I, mean, I love I love New York Film Festival and yeah. Um, it's just it's an extraordinary honor mm -hmm. to be part of the fiftieth. I actually went to Walter Reed um, to go see a movie at the Gene Kelly festival that was a few weeks ago and mm -hmm. I um and they were doing like before the movie like they flashed stuff about the 50th New York Film Festival is coming and yeah. we didn't know if we were gonna go or not and 
and I was like, ah, I hope we get in. <laughs> It'll be so great. I want to be part of it. <laughs> and then it's great. So it feels pretty awesome. It's it just as great as I thought. Wond wonderful, wonderful. So let's talk a bit about the inspiration behind the project, how you and Noah first came up with this, because it surprised so many people when it was announced in the lineup in Toronto, because nobody knew you two had this film in the works. People knew you were working on your own directorial debut. I'm not sure what people thought of Noah was doing, but people were surprised when, um, was this just like a random occurrence, this film, or had you two been long planning uh, to make something together again? Um, I, well, I, I loved working with him on Greenberg, and then um, I was very lucky he wanted to work again and on something else, and um, I think it was just because N no one was really looking um, when we were working on it, and it was something that we were, we, you know, we we worked on very hard over a longer long period of time, but we ne we didn't really talk about it. Nobody really asked, and then um, at some point we had a, this this film that we we loved a lot, but um, it it was it was definitely worked very hard on. It just wasn't. It was just never announced, mm -hmm. so it felt. I guess it felt more like, uh, oh, this just happened, but it was um, it was a longer process. Yeah. Um, but I would say uh, it was it, it was good, uh, kind of like once we started trading notes, it was really this character kind of came out of what we were talking about and writing, and she just sort of emerged. What were you talking about in writing? Because she's such a unique um, creation, this Frances. I mean, it's it's funny. I think characters. Um, it sounds s silly to talk about it like this, but it, they really do kind of present themselves to you. I sometimes don't even know. It's not that they. Uh, when I this is a poor comparison because it is no nowhere near on the same level. But when I was in college and wrote plays and stuff like that, I would sometimes have this experience of. Um, if if I could just get characters to talk to each other, they'll they'd tell me who they were, mm -hmm. and. Um, that's sort of what happened here. It's just that this character, through talking to different people and you know seeing stuff that's not in the movie, just all of a sudden this person emerged from that and who she was. And I think Noah um, saw saw it and and his voice. It was it was a strange mel mind meld of mm -hmm. um, because I I don't know. I've never really r written with someone else like that, so I don't know what it's like. I know that the, the writing together it, it felt like we shared one brain sometimes, or we'd have the same idea at the same time, or yeah. he'd call and say, yeah, "I was thinking this," and I'd say, oh, "I was just gonna call you," or, <laughs> you know. So, um, but I don't know. That seems rare. So. Was she inspired by anybody in real life? Anybody you know? Um, anybody he knows? I think it's a, an amalgam of different things. Mm -hmm. But um, really, it it stops at some point. It stops being an inspiration from life and just starts living on its own, which is what what happened. Um, now I've been talking to a lot of people who've seen the film, and everybody loves it. But um, a lot of people have been like coming away from it, going, "I know someone like her," or "I am her." Do you either of you two know anybody like Francis or? Someone of the same mindset. Um, I mean, I feel like I'm half Sophie, half Francis. Mm -hmm. I I think people relate to different parts of each of them, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I know. I feel I f I feel like I know Francis, uh, Francis's and Sophie's, or I, I feel like I've known people who've had Francis or Sophie moments in their lives but I really think of her as her own person I really I, I have trouble um, I don't I, I really think of Francis as an entity and a person that exists and I'm glad that people relate mm -hmm. to it but I also think of her as her own person that's great um, <laughs> so uh, how did Mickey come on board because the friendship portrayed on screen is so so tangible so real so lifelike I'm curious like had, had you two known each other for a long bit before making this or was it just a random casting <laughs> um i met greta once i think through mutual friends but that was it we played a mean game what, what, what was it we played a <laughs> game called Bananagrams, which <laughs> i am very good at and, and she's I, really good and, and really I competitive. Made, I made Mickey play with me, and then I beat her badly for like 
a long time until you finally got up and you were like, I'm going to go. You're I don't just, like, like losing. <laughs> you're just winning this <laughs> game. It's, it's, it was very strange. So, and it, so, so that was the only interaction we'd had. And then she came Beating in her at a game. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, the, but uh, like, I'll, to be fair, like I, I had engineered this game. Oh. I was like, you <laughs> know, to win. Yeah. yeah I, cool. I was good at it. And then I like invited her to come play oh. as if I was a novice <laughs> or something. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I got this part um, through auditioning. Um, I went in for Doug Abel. Um, it was no sides, no script. It didn't there was no information um, apart from that it was untitled Noah Baumbach film. And um, I I guess it did good job because I got a call back like two months, three months later. Mm -hmm. um, and that was for Noah, and then that went really well, and then I went in for Greta and Noah, and then, yeah. So I, uh, you said there was no script, so what do you have to do in the audition to win them over? It was cold. Oh, it was cold, cold reading? Yeah, cold read. Okay, okay. So you didn't know what the movie was about, you just knew a few I, scenes of yeah. what your character went through? Yeah. Cool. Can you talk a bit about the friendship um, between the two women in the film, and where that was born out of. I mean, you told us where Frances was born out of, but specifically the, the relationship between the two women. Well, um, I, I, Frances started making a lot of sense as a character with Sophie when, when Mickey um, came in and, and read with me. And um, it just, I, I, it's, I, 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 we, we weren't, great friends but we've since become mm -hmm. great friends and there was just um something that i think we both knew what those friendships were like and then um we just dropped into a, a rhythm with each other very quickly and um i don't know i mean for, for me i just felt like mickey was so instantly perfect um in the part and i think sometimes this is not uh, w you know there were lots of amazing actresses who came into audition, but Mickey had something about her that I felt was so special because she didn't, she didn't play at being close or play at being tender because she just was. And, and there's sort of an intimacy in, in not um, being demonstrative with your affection all of the time. And Mickey had this quality that just made you believe that she was close to Francis and she wasn't pretending to be, if mm -hmm. that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Aww. <laughs> so, uh, given what you just said, I mean, how much of the writing changed once she came on board? Did, did you write for her, essentially, when she was cast, or was the script already set in stone? Mm -hmm. No, the script was set. It was um, set. She just was, um, she just walked in and was perfect. Um, I I think no Noah said about his writing he doesn't like to he writes without thinking about the casting usually beforehand and mm -hmm. I think I inherited that from him and um, because you let the character be fully what they are on the page and Biggie was perfect. Thank you. <laughs> the script was also perfect. Um, I've I've never read. So lines like that where you don't have to work at all to make them work mm -hmm. um you just say them and they 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 work <laughs> they make it um it was such a amazing experience having that was there any improvising on set was there or no it was just script no we didn't improvise we don't improvise not with Noah. Nope. Nope. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I sense this. We don't. <laughs> that you no, wanted to. No, no, no. no it's okay. not. I mean, it's very. You don't need to. No. You don't need it's, to. It's also we do. Um, it's not. I. It's. It's not only not improvised. It's also. We do lots and lots and lots of takes. Mm -hmm. We did like I think we were averaging like twenty-seven, thirty takes more. Forty. It's just a lot. Uh, and so it. Um, you would kind of lose the meaning of the scene and then because you do it so many times and then find it again there's a scene where i do a headstand and i think <laughs> i did 41 headstands, 41 headstands in a row i can't remember the final count but it was like a lot so i had a crazy headache at the end of it yeah i'm really good at headstands now wow yeah do, do you want to do one for us no no <laughs> sorry i tried 
Um, can we talk about the effortless nature of the film? Because the film plays like a breeze. I mean, it's just so much fun to watch. The time just flies by. Was the making of it effortless or, or not? <laughs> no, uh, the making of it was, um, it was effortless in its... Um, it was, uh, I mean, it was my favorite thing I've ever gotten to work on because, um, I mean, all the actors were so great and uh, it was also... Everyone who worked on it was really really tremendous and so talented and gave so much of themselves that it it felt like every day was um everybody really wanted to be there and I, I and films are mostly like that because it's pretty amazing to make movies but this one had even more heightened quality of that and it was hard work and we worked it was a long process but it was um so gratifying I don't know Mickey what do you think um yeah, no, every, what you said. <laughs> um, long days. Long days. I mean, it was definitely, like, for me, it was a new experience. I've never had an opportunity to, like, do so many takes. Um, and it was, oh, yeah, it was, it was new for me, but it was really rewarding. Now, I've never seen you on screen before, but you blew me away in this film, and you're blowing up now. I mean, like, the news trades have been going nuts with this recent casting announcement of you as Patti Smith in this um, upcoming biopic. Can you tell me a bit about the project and about um, taking on the icon and how you're going to do it? Sure. Um, I did it already. Oh, you did it yeah, already? I oh. shot this summer. Great. Yeah. It how, how did it go? It went well. Hopefully it went well. Hopefully, um, yeah. Hopefully it won't get cut out. But um, <laughs> it's called CBGB, and it's about Hilly Crystal, really, his story. Um, and there are these amazing cameos throughout the movie, and I got to be Patti Smith. So very honored. Did you meet with her first to, to study her? I, or? I didn't. You didn't? Um, no, but I, no. No. Oh. Awesome. Sadly. Sadly. Um, so why don't we... Um, talk about the black and white nature of the film. The sh film's shot in black and white. It's so beautiful. Was it digitally shot or was it shot on film? Um, it, was, it was digitally, digitally shot. shot. Okay. And, and why black and white? I'm curious. Um, I, well, I, I think Noah can probably answer that um, better. But I think when we were um, working on it, it always f it felt, it felt black and white. I mean, I, I, I have an, a story, or I have a, we always knew it was going to be in black and white. I don't think, I don't think, I think that was kind of part of it. Um, but I, I think that part of it is that, um, you know those photo strips that you get on a photo booth, the black and white photo booth? Yep. And I had, so, I, I had so many of those pictures with me and my friends because we'd go to the state fair in the summer and take those pictures and there was something instantly sad about them even while they were happening they they felt like something that were was nostalgic in the moment and um they already felt like i remember getting them out when they like print them out on the strips and looking at them and already feeling like i'm going to be old one day looking at these and i think that there was that feeling um i don't know that that was what the black and white evoked to me and um but I, noah can probably answer that better but um for me that was always what it f felt like that's why I, I loved it yeah so it was part of the script writing process you did envision the film this way yeah cool i don't think i ever we've ever really ta thought about it in color it was always in black and white mm -hmm. well it works beautifully so that's true so i think we're going to open up to the audience and see if the audience has any questions for us so then we have uh three questions from twitter so i think we have a microphone going around is that, that yes no no microphone okay um do you mind yelling Me? yeah oh, uh, how would you or, I think I have a chord here I can actually come to you and how would you compare Noah's acting style with Woody Allen's? oh um no so directing directing yeah oh um very, very different actually um I uh, Woody Allen doesn't didn't do a lot of takes and um and i mean they're both very precise and um are 
visibly unhappy when it's not going well. <laughs> but um, um, but it, it's just, it, uh, it, it, he, uh, Woody Allen just does m much fewer takes. It's much more like um, he'll do like three to five takes. So you're, you kind of hope that you get it right because it's got to be one of those. And um, um, I would say that's the, that, that's one difference. There are other differences, but I'll just stick with that one right now. Hi, how you doing? Um, if you're comfortable with answering this, what was the shooting schedule like and what was the budget? Um, I don't think we're talking about those things. <laughs> um, no, I don't think we're talking... I don't know the budget answer um, in, in I, I can't confidently answer that. Um, we managed to shoot, I don't know what the total day count was, but we managed to shoot, um, it, was a, it was a lot of days. We didn't do it, um, it wasn't, we didn't do, I, suffice to say we didn't do it in like 14 days. It was longer than that. 30? <laughs> it's somewhere. Somewhere around then, so. okay, okay. <laughs> Secret's probably two years or something crazy. Okay. I think we had a question up front, right? Greta, you're so incandescent. The way you light up the screen, it's magical. How is that? How do you do that? How are you going to feel when you win the Academy Award when you do? Can you tell us a killer Russell Brand story, an awesome Ben Stiller story? Please. <laughs> What? Um, okay. Uh, I thank you. I, I'm so I'm so glad that um, you feel that way. Um, I, I I don't know. Um, I don't. I I kind of misplaced the question. Is there? Do you want an awesome Russell Brand story? Yes, I do. I, I don't know. I can't. Well, an awesome Ben Stiller story is. Um, he got well. He came last night, oh, he did? and that was. Um, and I have such affection for him in that movie, and um, it meant so much that he was he was there with his wife, and um, it w I was just thrilled seeing them. So that's um, that's it. I don't have anything from Russell, uh, just Ben. What did, <laughs> what, did, what did he think of the film? Or what did he, he tell you? <laughs> he, told, he told me he really liked it, <laughs> but I, I've learned everybody that. No, that's not true. People have actually told me they don't like my films. So sometimes, yeah, sometimes people will. Which, tell which you. ones? I, can't. I shouldn't have even. <laughs> Why not? Open that gate. Okay. <laughs> people come up to you and actively tell you that they don't like some of your work. Yeah. No, it's really. Wow. Yeah. People, I think sometimes if people just see your movie and then talk to you, sometimes they think that you're not actually there. Oh. Like they think that that talking to you is like talking to the screen. Like you you don't care and that like you you're not experiencing the moment with them, <laughs> and um, it's really upsetting. And you're like, yeah, I'm standing here. God, that's horrible. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Okay. Do we have another question from the audience? You heard it here first, Greta. Ladies, um, thank you for being here this evening. Um, the question I have is you're both sort of famous for being part of a movement of doing it yourself and uh, just taking control of your careers, you know, writing, producing your own things. Uh, if you had any advice for people who are aspiring to be actors or filmmakers, would you say that um, you concentrate more on character-driven stories, or would you? Do you think that like traditional story structure is more important place to start off? Um, oh, um, well, uh, I, I, I think. Um, I guess uh, when I think about m films I've made um, at different points, I, I'm I'm really happy that I've made all the different kinds of films I've gotten to make, and it's been it's been a lot at a lot of different budget levels and sizes. Um, I think I I really like um, I mean I really like character driven pieces, but I like character driven pieces that are very tightly scripted and plotted. Um, I really admire well-made movies and um, movies that tell a story and um, they're very hard to make <laughs> but um, 
I, I think more than anything, my advice would be, I guess, make, make the kind of, try to make the kind of movies you like as much as you can. Um, don't try to make what you think other people like. Um, if, it, if it's the kind of movie you'd want to see when you go into a movie theater, that's... Um, but it's, it's, you know, it's hard to make movies that are good. There, it's, a, it's a hard thing. That's why it's, when you see one that's great, it feels so special. Should I turn to Twitter? Do we have another question from the audience? No? Oh. No. No? No. <laughs> okay, so from uh, ABK Man, ac app. Sorry if I totally mispronounced your, your Twitter handle. Uh, Francis Ha brought to mind Claudia Wales Girlfriends. Was that an influence? Um, I do. I really love that movie. Um, I, it wasn't a specific thing we were thinking about, but I, I really, I, I, it's a great, it's a great underseen movie, and one of the few about female friendships. So, um, it's definitely something that um, I, I do love, but mm -hmm. it wasn't specific to this. Was there a specific influence for you too, or was it? Um, no, I mean, it, this certainly there were. There are things that um, I, you know, there's things that I always think about that I really love, and mm -hmm. um, but uh, th there wasn't one thing that we we said. We didn't even really know this. We, like I said before, everything kind of revealed itself to us while we were working on it. So it's not like we set out to make this story about this female friendship and we we didn't say like oh we need to make this movie yeah. it kind of while we were writing it it kind of became the story that we were telling but it wasn't something that we were um we we didn't it it get the ideas came out of the muck we didn't impose an idea on it but um but we you know like that being said there's like lots of little moments and influences and things that were um, that were important while we were writing it. Mm -hmm. so. Like, like what? Like if you don't mind, I don't <laughs> I'm 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 editing myself right now. No, it's um, fine. In my head, um, um, I mean, certainly, um, well, we would we would talk about things like um like uh, no, you know, Noah would say like he there was a moment in a Roman movie that he w liked where a character something came true for a character and he'd say why don't we give um why don't we give Frances something she believes in and that she wants and then have it happen for her at the end mm. and like and then i'd go off and say okay well what's that going to be what she, what does she believe in what does she want like, so, so there's like an interplay between you know what we loved and what we were reading and watching and the movie because i think when you're working on something all these little bits somehow influence what the thing becomes. It's mm -hmm. sort of like when you write a paper in college and oh, this is my experience, all of a sudden something you're learning in um, a totally unrelated class will somehow seem really like, oh, that's perfect. That fits perfectly in with what I'm doing. But it's really your brain trying to work everything into one. Um, but there's, I mean, there's a, a few books we were, I, I read that no I'd read before, like, um, Brooklyn by Colm Toybin and Death of the Heart by Elizabeth Bowen. They're both about young girls and these kind of beautiful portraits and um, very emotional and, and very sweet. And I, th I, was, I was thinking about the tones of the, the, those novels. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I mean, those are two. <laughs> Mickey, were you given anything to read to prepare for the role? Any books, any, any plays? You always hear directors doing this to some actors. So um, I wasn't even given the script. <laughs> <laughs> even when you got the role? Yeah. Wow. Um, but no. Um, no, it wasn't. No. Sorry. I can't cool. add. Um, we just made her hang out with us. Yeah, I just hung out. Just hung out a lot. Yeah. Cool, cool. Um, we have another question on Twitter. Mm -hmm. um, this one's from Zman620. Greta, in some ways, your characters in Greenberg and Francis Ha are similar, but mostly they are very different. <laughs> uh, can you compare the two? Sure. Um, 
<laughs> cancel uh, each other out. But. Some ways. I, well, I mean, I, I don't, I, Florence, uh, well, F Florence was, um, I, uh, Florence needed a lot more, I, 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 the way I think about the characters, it's hard to talk about them mm -hmm. externally, but I think Florence was, um, needed a lot more protection than Francis did. I think Florence had a lot less, um, armor and a lot less, uh, uh, the way I think about her, she was, um, I always thought of her as just being open and, and being completely defenseless against people and what they wanted from her, or taking things from her. And she, she, uh, she just, to me, I, the, the way I felt about her was that she is this, um, I almost, it's almost like I f feel her physically like, uh, like a big, a, like a, a, a big heart trapped in a big body. Like there was something, and I, and I, well, even when I think about her, I start getting upset a little bit because I, I loved her so much and I loved playing her. And I don't know, Florence is, she was a beautiful character. I've never read anything before where I, I just, I, th I just, I cried for her when I read it the first time. And anyway, just talking about it now, I just, I love her. I thought she was so beautiful and so um, underappreciated. And I thought that the, the film, to shine a, a light in her corner, was really special. Um, and Frances is a crazy, crazy girl. <laughs> no, Frances is, um, Frances is so much more buoyant to me. Frances, to me, I, I guess I describe everything physically as like one of those dolls that you push over and springs back up. Like she's indomitable. She will not back down which is i i love about her and i find it exhausting about her i i mean i've never been so exhausted playing a character before i was always running and she's always falling and and leaping over things and and she's got a temper and she's really um there's something about her that's so um to, i guess to that tweet <laughs> you just <laughs> You got me to cry. I know. I didn't see that coming. No, me neither. <laughs> <laughs> now I think I have time for one last question. Do you mind if I ask it or do we? Oh, we have one up here. Okay. okay hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Great time. I know. Um, who's your favorite director and um, why? And, and maybe uh. because of a movie or whom would you like to work with as a director? Oh, favorite director in the world? Noah. Um, uh, <laughs> no, I, but then other than that, um, my favorite director uh, is uh, is uh, is Mike Lee. Um, I love his film so much, and um, Mike Lee. And um, every time he makes another one, I just I can't believe that. I mean, the, the actors he works with are so great, and um, and I I saw a piece of theater that he directed in London um, last year, which I just, it was like the best play I've ever seen in my life. And um, I, it's this, I love um, highly structured naturalism, the way he does it. And um, he never, I don't know, he never sells his characters out. He never makes you hate them, but he never allows you to totally love them. It's just a mysterious mixture. I. I really love, I like his movies. I guess he's the person. Have you met him? No. No? No. I, don't, I, did, I did just meet Liv Ullman. So that was very exciting. <laughs> just another thing that happened to me. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, you two, for coming out. <laughs> Congratulations. You.